In this video, we're going to focus on the E1 reaction mechanism. Now, let's start with this example problem. Let's say we have tert butyl bromide, and we wish to react it with water. And we're going to heat the solution. Heating the solution favors the E1 uh, reaction. So how can we draw the E1 product for this reaction? Elimination reactions, they produce alkenes. And so we need to form a carbon-carbon double bond. The first step in the mechanism of the E1 reaction is that the leaving group leaves, in the case of alkyl halides. And so we're going to get a tertiary carbocation. Now the last thing we need to do is use water as a base. Water is going to abstract a proton. The carbon-hydrogen bond is going to break. Those electrons will be used to form the pi bond. And so the product of this reaction looks like this. So we have an alkene. And so that's the basic idea behind the E1 reaction mechanism. It can convert alkyl halides into alkenes. Now let's try another example. Let's say we have 2-bromobutane, and we wish to react it with water and heat it as well. Draw the major E1 product and identify any other E1 products that can be produced in this reaction. So we know the first step is that the leaving group is going to leave. And so we're going to get a secondary carbocation. Now when dealing with elimination reactions, we need to treat water as a base rather than a nucleophile. If we treat it as a nucleophile, if it attacks the carbocation intermediate, then it's going to give us the S1 product. But to get the E1 product, it has to behave as a base. Now we need to remove an adjacent hydrogen, a hydrogen that's one carbon away from the carbocation. And so water can remove the blue hydrogen or the green hydrogen. If it goes for the blue hydrogen, we can get this alkene, one butene. Now if it goes for the green hydrogen, we can get two butene. But we can get the trans isomer or we can get the cis isomer. And so we can get a mixture of products here. Now, which of these is the major product? Internal alkenes are more stable than terminal alkenes. So this one is the least stable. Therefore, it's going to be a minor product. In addition, you need to know that tetrasubstituted alkenes are more stable than tri-substituted alkenes, and that's more stable than disubstituted alkenes and so forth. 1-butene is a monosubstituted alkene. There's only one R group that it has. And in order to determine the substitution of an alkene, identify the two carbon atoms that make up the double bond, and count how many carbon atoms are attached to those two double bonded carbon atoms highlighted in red. In this case, there's only one. So this terminal alkene is a monosubstituted alkene. Now for the trans alkene, there are two carbon atoms that are attached to the double bonded carbon atoms highlighted in red. So it's a disubstituted alkene. It has two R groups. And the same is true for the cis alkene. It's also disubstituted. So which is more stable, the trans alkene or the cis alkene? The trans alkene is more stable than a cis alkene. Ideally, you want the bulky groups to be far apart from each other. So the trans alkene is going to be the major product in this reaction. And the other two are minor products. Now let's work out another example. So here we have a alcohol, a secondary alcohol. And we're going to react it with sulfuric acid which can be written as H2SO4. And we're going to heat the solution. So draw the major E1 product and write the mechanism for it as well. So go ahead and try it. Now, when we had an alkyl halide, the first thing we do was we kicked out the leaving group to get the carbocation. However, the OH group is a bad leaving group. So the first thing we need to do is protonate the alcohol turning it into a good leaving group.
The reason why the OH group is a bad leaving group is because hydroxide is a strong base, but water is the weak base, so water is a better leaving group than hydroxide. So once it leaves, we're going to get a secondary carbocation. And that secondary carbocation is adjacent to a tertiary carbon, so therefore, a hydride shift will occur. And so right now, what we have is a tertiary carbocation. Now, we could form the double bond anywhere around that carbocation. We could form it here, here, or here. So therefore, we can get any one of these three products. That's one possibility. Here's another possibility. And then here is the other option. So which of these three alkenes is the major product? Which one is the most stable alkene? The most stable alkene is typically called the Zaytsev product. The least stable alkene is usually associated with the Hoffman product. So what we need to do is determine which alkene has the greatest number of R groups. So this alkene has three R groups. There are three carbon atoms attached to the double bonded carbon atoms. And for the alkene on the right side, it has two R groups. And for the one on the top, it has a total of four R groups. So this is a tetra substitute alkene, and it is the most stable. Therefore, this is the major product. So now let's finish the mechanism showing how we can get this product. So what we need to do is remove this hydrogen. And so we need to use a base. Now the E1 dehydration reaction works well when using concentrated sulfuric acid. Now there might be some water in a solution, so we could use whatever water that's left as a base to take off a hydrogen. If you're not sure, you could just put B as a generic base. Now sometimes if there's not much water around, you could use HSO4 minus. So you have to determine what's in a solution and what can act as a base. But just to keep things simple, let's use water. And so these are the last two steps we need to do. So after that, we're going to get this product. And so that's it for the mechanism for that reaction. Now let's try another example. So let's react this alcohol with sulfuric acid. Go ahead and try this problem. So just like the last problem, the first step is going to be protonation. And then after that, the leaving group is going to leave. Now that we have a good leaving group. And so we have a secondary carbocation, but that's adjacent to a quaternary carbon. And so a methyl shift will occur. So one of the methyl groups is going to move towards the carbocation. And as a result, the whole carbon structure will change. So here's the new methyl group. And now the plus charge is going to be on the carbon that lost the methyl group. So right now we have a tertiary carbocation which is more stable than a secondary carbocation. Now the best place to put the double bond is right in the middle. And so that's going to lead to the major product. Therefore, we need to take off this hydrogen. So I'm going to use water as a weak base to do that. And then that's it. This will give us the final major product for this reaction. So here we have a tetra substitute alkene. So when dealing with the E1 reaction, the major product will simply be the most stable alkene that can form. Now let's work on one more example. Draw the major E1 product for this reaction. So let's react it with ethanol and let's heat the solution. So feel free to pause the video and work on it. So we have an alcohol haline and so the first thing that's going to happen is the leaving group is going to leave. Bromide is a good leaving group, so we don't have to like add a hydrogen to it or something. Now notice that we have a 5-carbon ring next to a carbocation. When you see that, 
a ring expansion will occur. The driver force for that is stability. A 6 carbon ring is more stable than a 5 carbon ring. Now let's call this carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now where is the positive charge going to be now? Is it still going to be on carbon 1? Is it going to be on carbon 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6? How can we tell where the positive charge is going to be? So feel free to pause the video and try to figure that out. Now, carbon 2 and carbon 6, they both lost a bond. And carbon 1 and carbon 6, they're going to gain a new bond. A bond is going to form between carbon 1 and 6. So carbon 2, it lost a bond, but it didn't get one back. So carbon 2 is going to have the positive charge. So let's call this carbon 1 because it has a methyl group. Let's call this 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So this is the new bond that was formed between carbons 1 and 6. And now the plus charge is on carbon 2. So we have a secondary carbocation next to a tertiary carbon. So a high redshift will occur. And now we're going to have a tertiary carbocation. So notice that we have a more stable carbocation, and also we have a six-membered ring that has no ring strain. And so the driving force for these rearrangements and the ring expansion is due to uh, stability. Now, the last thing we need to do is basically make the double bond. And so let's use ethanol as a weak base to take away the hydrogen atom. And so this is the most stable alkene that we could form in this example. This is the major product.